just blessing those guys because they wanted them to see we're not against you we're not here to attack you we're here to see God's kingdom come that you can enter into it and you can have a, a, re a real encounter with who he is as well you're not our enemies the Bible says our enemy is the devil spiritual force people aren't our enemy people are there because God loves them he wants to encounter them he wants to bring them back into his family because this messed up world needs some redemption in it needs some restoration now, as a result of that incident, the government went to representatives of that church network and said, you know what, we can't fight you even if we wanted to now. So, you guys do what you want. Even if we sent the army in here, we couldn't solve this. So, do what you want. And so, what's been happening is churches like that one have been rising up and standing to challenge that ungodly system which says you can't preach the gospel, you can't teach this, you can't do that. And right now, what's going on, it's a crucial time in China where there's a particular church in Beijing, which uh, it's, a, it's a long story. You may have seen some info about it in the news. Even BBC's reported on this church called Shouwang Church, which means the Watchman Church. And they, um, they've just had, uh, they grew from a handful of people to several thousand in, in a very short period of time. Uh, they're one of the key churches in China, kind of lead, lead churches there. And um, there's been just an outbreak of persecution has come against them since the beginning of this year. They were uh, denied entry into a building that they bought. They were meeting openly uh, for weeks, just out in the park, thousands of them just meeting. And then the government started putting their leaders under house arrest, started, uh, people were losing their jobs, people were going to prison. But sometimes people understand China always in the context of persecution, persecution, persecution. But really, you need to understand, for those of you who are interested in China, what's going on now is this isn't about persecution, what's happening there. It's about the church standing to claim its birthright in that nation. And over 150 church leaders wrote an open letter to the government there in China saying, we've stood for enough of this. You must stop attacking our people the way you are because we are your only hope here in this nation. Chinese society is fast unraveling. Rampant consumerism is, is just destroying families. The Chinese go crazy. They'll come over to the UK the, and the, one of the places they know more than anything else is Bista Village. Vista Retail Park. It's famous all over the over the the Orient. They come here to go to did like designer, you know, buy designer items, and they'll go and just blow five grand in one day just buying shirts. Clark's shoes in China cost about the equivalent of 150 to 200 pounds for a pair of Clark's shoes because it's seen as a Western designer label. Um, and these guys just blow money like it's going out of fashion because. They've, they've, it's come to them so quickly from a position of poverty and, and all of a sudden this kind of consumerist, materialist mindset is just running rampant in Chinese society and they're desperate. And so the church is stepping up and saying there is a, there's another way to live, there's another answer, you can have a connection with Christ. And in our ministry is Love China, this is what we tap into. And our vision is to see the Chinese church released into the mission field, into especially the 1040 window, that is the, the nations of the world which have little to no Christian presence at all, no access to the gospel, no access to the grace of God, they're just out there and uh, most of them are Muslim nations of course and we believe God loves Muslims and that he wants to bring them into a genuine relationship with them because, with him because uh, Muslims, they're very zealous, they want to do what's right, they want to be acceptable to God but what they have is a religious system, they don't have life, they don't have reality. And I'm going to finish with a verse of scripture, which uh, is what the Lord really uh, laid on my heart before I came up to speak this morning. And it's where uh, Jesus in John chapter 17, he says, You granted me to have authority over all nations so that those whom you've chosen for me would come to me and have eternal life. And this is what he said, And this is eternal life, that they may know you, the only true God, and know Jesus Christ whom you have sent. This is eternal life, that they may know you. And that word know doesn't mean know about, it means know intimately, know personally, as a friend or as a relative or as a father. And so the question of what is life, what is significant life, I believe you've got to go back to that verse. Jesus Christ, the most incredible thinker, speaker, leader, most controversial guy ever to have lived, that's what he said. This is eternal life, that people may know who the only true God is. They may know him personally and they may know Jesus Christ whom he has sent. That they may have a relationship with us. They may have a living, vital encounter and that they may fulfill the purpose that we intended for them when we created them in our image. And that's the Christian message and that's, that's been the testimony of my life. So I'd just like to in, invite us, it's uh, just gone nine. So I'm just going to close in a prayer and then I'll hand back to Mike who... Um, mm -hmm. 
who's going to, uh, we'll just close. And then if anyone wants, wants to come and talk or pray or anything afterwards, then that would be great. But I'll just in, invite you just, just to close your eyes where, where you are. Um, and you know, you know where you're at in relationship to God today. Maybe you feel you're walking closely with Him. Maybe, maybe you, I don't know why you came here. Maybe somebody just dragged you here. Maybe there's crisis you're facing in your life. Maybe you've heard the Christian message and you know, you think, I don't know if it's real. Like I thought, I don't know if it's real, but it sounds like it's what I need. Or maybe you were walking closely with God at one point and then things have come in and cut across and you thought, man, I just don't, somehow it doesn't seem real to me anymore. It seems like I've been pulled away from that, that path that I was on. Or maybe, you know, you've been, you've been a Christian for many years and you've just been hungry to see something happen, hungry to see God move in another way in your life. So just any and every situation could be represented here uh, in this room this morning. And I don't know what that situation is, but one thing I can tell you is your Father in Heaven knows what that need is. He knows exactly what's going on in your life and He knows exactly how to connect with you where you are. And so I'm just going to pray and that's what I'm going to ask Him to do. I'm going to ask Him to connect with you. And if it resonates with you, you get something good out of it, then just run with that. And if you want to come and discuss it and pray further, and especially if you want to, if today you've decided you want to put your life into Jesus' hands for the first time, then we would really, really love to pray with you and give you a gift of a, a, a New Testament uh, and ju just kind of connect with you, really, and, and, and just thank God together with you for you know, him, him coming into your life. So I'm just going to pray. Lord Jesus. Lord Jesus, thank you, you're here. Holy Spirit, I welcome you to release yourself over this whole room right now. Thank you that your kingdom is an everlasting kingdom and your kingdom is right here. So in Jesus' name, we just enforce the victory of the kingdom over every life present under the sound of my voice this morning. Whatever has gone on, in Jesus' name, I just command the devil to get his hands off of every single person. I command that thing to break. I command that mindset to break. I command whatever veil has stood from, from your people seeing more of you to just be shredded now. And I loose and release the peace of God into every person. Every disease, I take authority and break the power of that disease in people's lives and release your healing grace to them because Jesus, you are the healer. Father, Please would you make yourself known to every single person here, whatever that means for each individual. Thank you that you know. Where I don't know, you know. And Jesus, we just affirm you are our Lord and our life is in your hands. And we thank you that in your hands is the safest place to be. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Thanks, Mike. Thank you, Paul.